Namaste, beautiful people. Welcome to AM Yoga Moves. My name is Anne Marie. In today's class, in today's asana practice, we are going to be uh, inspiring ourselves from the Yama Ashteya. Uh, if you haven't seen the tutorial on Ashteya, you can watch it beforehand, or if not, you can just watch it afterwards. It's as you prefer. Uh, so we're going to be needing a block today, and also if you have some sort of strap. Um, because we're going to be doing some shoulder exercises in the beginning and also using the strap for some postures just to uh, show you ways in which you can adapt uh, the various postures. So in the spirit of non-stealing, which is asteya, we want to really respect our bodies but at the same time see uh, whether we're holding back or doing, doing too much in the postures and that's one of the reasons why I'm going to be using a lot of props so that you can really explore and see Where's that sort of sweet spot in each of the postures where you're doing just enough, just right, in such a way that you are allowing your body to um, heal and taking care of your future self, as we've talked about in the tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. I hope you enjoy this class um, and let's do it. <laughs> so we're gonna start off in a sitting position have my strap here nearby. You could, be a, if you could be using a belt also is one another possibility if you don't have a, a yoga strap. And I'd like you to sit starting seating on a block. So your ankles, see if you can just actually squeeze the block with your ankles so that your shins and the top of your feet are directly on the mat. And then before sitting down you can just take the skin of your calves and move it outwards and then come down into a sitting position. Make sure your knees are together. You can also pull a little bit backwards the skin from under your, your bum <laughs> so that really you're sitting, your sit bones are straight on the block. Pay attention to your back. So we want your back, we don't want to be tilting the pelvis forward. We just want the pelvis to be in a neutral position, belly in, chest up, Shoulders nice and relaxed, okay? Just bring the palms of the hands on the thighs and gently close your eyes. Taking the time to observe your breath. And also perhaps use this opportunity to observe if you have a tendency in life to reminisce on the past or try to push your way into a future moment or trying to change what presents to you, what presents itself to you in life. And part of Ashtaya is to really cultivate being grateful and being content with whatever it is that is in front of us. Each moment has something very precious and important to offer. And so if we are not living in the present moment, we are stealing from, our, from ourselves. So with this in mind, we can open our eyes and we're gonna do a pranayama breathing exercise together called Nadi Shodam. And this exercise is wonderful because it really allows to get into the areas of the lung that we don't normally exploit when we're just breathing normally in day-to-day -day life. It's a very cleansing breathing exercise. So we're going to be inhaling for two, holding the breath for four, and exhaling for four. Okay? So just place your palms of your hands on your top of your thighs. Look straight ahead. Start by exhaling all the air out of your nose. And let's begin. Inhale for one, two. Hold for one, two, three, four. Exhale four, three, two, one. Inhale for one, two. Hold for one, two, three, four. Exhale for four, 
three, two, one. Again, inhale for one, two, hold for one, two, three, four. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, hold for one, two, three, four. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Inhale for one, two, hold for one, two, three, four. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Last series. Inhale for one, two, hold for one, two, three, four, and exhale for four, three, two, one. Now inhale fully. Fill the lungs with air all the way up to your collarbones and through the mouth. Exhale. Just let it all go. Let it go. Very good. Now if you have your strap handy, okay, I'd just like you to take out your strap and make it as large as you need to, okay? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing some shoulder rotation. So going back and then coming back forward. So keeping the arms extended, so like I said, keep the strap as wide as you need. Hello, Shanti. And then just come back and forth. So just working on the rotator cuff of the shoulder. So we just want to do it just right. Maybe after a few, you might want to try to just come in a near a little more narrow. Very good. <laughs> okay. So now for the next exercise, you may or may not need your strap depending on your shoulder flexibility. So let's start by bringing the left hand behind the back. So the palm of the back of your hand actually should be against your back. You might need to help yourself by bringing your left elbow a little bit more in so that your hand can come a little bit more upward between both of your shoulder blades. Now, as you inhale, raise your right arm up and see if you can come behind and touch your fingers, maybe create a bind, okay? So if this is not possible for whatever reason, you can use the strap, keep it in your right hand, and then just bring it behind you and grab the strap and work from there. So once you are in the position, just observe your trunk, the trunk of your body, to see if you're straight or crooked. So you want to keep a straight spine, bring the chin a little bit towards your chest, breathe normal, now, if this is very easy for you, you want to bring your right elbow inward, sort of behind your head is what you're trying to do. Your left shoulder, you might notice, is tilted forward. So you want to really open the shoulder blade back. So depending on your level of flexibility in your shoulders, um, we'll do less or do more. One thing that's always important, as I keep on mentioning, is your breath. So breathe nice and calmly through the nose. Just looking straight ahead. Okay, and now let's release, okay? Let's do the second side. You might notice that there's a huge difference between the right and the left side here. So that's all fine and good. So again, if you feel like you need to use your left hand this time to bring in your left elbow behind your back to help place that right arm. Inhale, left arm up. And again, see if you can create a bind. So if you're right-handed, this side is going to be a little uh, more difficult for you. It's completely <laughs> normal. We're not all perfectly balanced or perfectly symmetrical. 
And one of the great benefits of yoga is to actually find that symmetry and um, regain that mobility in a balanced way on both sides of the body. So again, your right shoulder, we're trying to open the right shoulder backwards. Be gentle. Breathe through your nose. Super. And now let's release. You can bring your strap to the side. Remove the block. Make sure you just keep it somewhere handy. I'll keep it behind me so that you can see me better. Come back to the center of your mat on all fours. Inhale, and this time just lift your left leg off of the mat so that it's parallel to the floor. And slowly start raising your right arm off of the mat. So sunbird, keep your right ear with your right bicep, palm of the hand of the right hand just facing down towards the floor. And you might want to just take a slight peek over to your toes. You want your toes to be pointing directly downward towards the mat. Belly button towards the spine, suck that belly in, keep the hips parallel. Pushing away from that left shoulder blade and breathing normal. So next exercise, we're going to just lift the left leg up and with your right hand, see if you can come back and find your foot. Okay, the top of your left foot. And as you inhale, push the, right, the left foot up. So you're pushing with your foot in your hand. Look straight ahead. So it's just a little bow, floor bow position while on all fours. And just take a few breaths here. Chest up. Look up, right arm completely extended, shoulder away from the ear. One last inhale. Push up, full expression, exhale, left knee down on the mat, right hand down on the mat. Let's do the other side. Inhale, right leg out and back straight, and then lift the left arm up, palm of the hand towards the mat, hips parallel, right toes, check your right toes because you want your right thigh to be doing an inner rotation, hips parallel to the floor, and you're just looking straight below onto your mat. Make sure you're pressing all the fingers of the right hand onto the mat, and you're pushing away from your shoulder. And breathe. Belly button in, sucking the belly in, contracting the pelvic muscles, And now just bend your right knee and come back with your left hand and see if you can catch your foot. Okay? If just catching your foot is your full expression and it's already pulling a lot in your right thigh, that's not a problem. So here, again, we want to be doing just enough. Not too much, not too little. So I'm actually pushing in my, right, in my left hand with my right foot. Look up. Breathing through the nose. Inhale, full expression. And exhale. Right knee down on the mat. Left hand down on the mat. Super. Let's just step back to plank here. If you have lower back pain or pain in your shoulders, you can just move your knees back and come into a modified plank, like so. So if not full plank, take a nice deep inhale here. Exhale, I want us to come down in five, four, three, two, one. 
release the tops of the feet on the mat, inhale and come up into a cobra. So keep the pelvis on the mat, look ahead, chest up, look up, clip the elbows in towards the body, inhale one last time, and as you exhale, tuck the toes, either tra transition it on your knees and go back into downward facing dog. Feet should be parallel. Okay, so imagine that you have a block and actually, if your block is not too far, we can actually try this. So you can bring your block inside of your thighs. Okay, so on the narrow side, come back into your downward facing dog with your block. And from here, imagine that you're sort of rolling your thighs inward to push the block backwards, as if there was like a little conveyor belt between your two thighs and you're pushing the block backwards. So biceps towards the sky, triceps towards the mat. Belly button in, sucking the belly in. Excellent. If you have the block and you are using it, you can just remove it, set it to the side. And without moving the hand, just try to walk your feet up towards your hands until they reach between your hands. Keep your hip, your feet hip width and just upper body towards the mat, grab your elbows, forward bend. Okay, so you can let go of the elbows. You can keep the knees micro bent and we're gonna come back up with a rounded spine on an inhale, contract the lower abdomen. If you have sciatica, if you have uh, herniated discs, do not come up with a rounded back. I prefer that you come up with a straight back, okay? Good. Let's grab our blocks again, or block rather. <laughs> so we're gonna do the chair series here. I want you again to bring the block on the narrow side between your thighs, okay? So the idea is to keep the block squeezed between your thighs. So the prop that we're using here is actually just in order to remind us or to allow us to become aware of how we should be contracting the thighs when, even when we don't have a block, okay? So you're rotating your thighs inward as if you wanted to push the block backwards. Feet parallel, bring the arms up parallel to the floor, wrists in line with the shoulders, Again, for slight forward tilt to make sure that the pelvis is in neutral. Inhale here, spine straight. Exhale, come down into chair. Yeah, super. So we don't wanna stick our bum out, tailbone towards the mat, sucking the belly in, pushing that chest up. Shoulders nice and relaxed, arms straight, face relaxed. Come down deeper, 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 deeper. Bring the weight into the heels. Stay here for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, come back all the way up. And for the second part, let's come up all the way up onto the tippy toes. So as high as you can, like a ballerina. And as you exhale, come back down into that imaginary chair. Keep the back straight. Stop once your thighs are parallel to the mat. Chest up, tailbone towards the mat. Look straight ahead. Come up a little bit higher on the toes if you can. Good, and on your next inhale, come all the way up. Very good, and as you exhale, heels on the mat, arms to the side. <laughs> And we can now remove the block for a second. Okay. Half moon series. Inhale, arms up, stretch the arms up to the sky. Interlace all tail and fingers, thumbs as well, but release the index, looking straight ahead. 
weight on the heels, tilt the pelvis forward, belly in towards the spine. Inhale, chest up. And as you exhale, bend to the right. So you're as if you were squeezing between two walls. Open the chest as you inhale. Exhale, bend to the right. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale in the center. Inhale once again. Exhale, now bend to the left. So the weight's in the heels, hips, heels aligned. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, bend to the left. And inhale, come back all the way up. And exhale, arms down to the sides. Good. Now with your block, you can bring, bring the block again onto the mat. So step up on the block with your left foot. If you have a foam block, this might be a little bit more challenging, but still do the best that you can. And then I want you to just bring your right foot up as if you were standing up, but your right foot isn't supported by anything. So what we're going to do is we're just going to work on some little dips of the hip. So as you inhale, dip the right hip, heel down, the right foot down, exhale, come all the way up. Inhale, dip the right hip so that your right foot touches the mat, exhale, come all the way up. And let's just keep on doing this exercise like so. So it's just like tilting of the pelvis, touching the right foot on the mat. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up. Keep on going. You're gonna feel the burn after a little bit, which is good. So try to find that sweet spot. Challenge yourself a little bit without overdoing it. Yeah. Okay. Now come all the way back up. Now we're gonna just do sort of a rotation okay so as you inhale you can bend a little bit the right the, the right, left knee sorry to see if you can go down forward with your right foot and then sort of pedal back and come back to center so we're doing a circular motion now so bend the left knee pedal down so you're just touching barely touching the floor with your right foot this is an excellent mobility exercise so you're going to feel it in your ankle in your thigh in your left glute. So it's as if we were pedaling a bicycle with the right foot. Let's just do a couple more reps of this. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. And let's release. <laughs> That's enough of that for that leg. <laughs> okay. If you feel like you need to shake out your left leg, you can do that. And we're just gonna move on to the next, to the other side. So right foot now on the block, right leg extended. And now we're gonna do the dips. So as you inhale, dip the left hip down, inhale, back up. Inhale, dip, exhale up. Inhale, dip, exhale up. So the upper body, you're trying to keep your upper body as straight as possible. And let's continue doing it. Working on your balance. Feeling it in the right glute. Absolutely. Looks like pretty basic exercise, but it's actually quite effective. A couple more reps, 10 more seconds. Good. Okay. Now come up parallel again, and we're gonna do the pedaling, but with the other foot. So as you inhale, you can bend the right knee, brush the tip of the toes on the left foot back, low down on the mat, come back up. 
and again. And we want to do about 10 of those. I think that's how many we did on the other side. So we're just sort of like gently pushing the ground with our left foot. Yeah. Trying not to touch the mat with the left foot. Just a couple more, three more. Okay, last one. Oh, very good. And then let's release. Okay, that felt good, didn't it? <laughs> a little, little bum workout to get a nice bum. <laughs> now come back up to the top of your mat, feet parallel. We're going to do <coughs> one series of classic sun salutations. So feet parallel, belly in, arms to the side, chest up. Start by exhaling the air out of your nose. As you inhale, come up but with your arms forward. Stretch them forward and then up. Look up. On the exhale, do a slight back bend. So push the pelvis forward, chest up. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, you can bend from the hips or bend the knees. Coming down with a straight back. Try it with bent knees to start out. Hands on each side of the feet and then you can slowly extend the legs. Inhale, flat back, either keeping the tips of the fingers on the mat or bringing them up onto your shins. Exhale, hands down, right foot back, right knee on the mat, top of the right foot on the mat. Inhale, arms up, body up, look ahead. Exhale, just let your hips sink down low, belly in. You can take the time to check your hips because sometimes we are like really twisted here. So it's like, are you overcompensating in depth and not respecting the alignment of your body? So it's good for all of us to actually check in on, hey, I'm not doing the posture properly, which is my priority. So hips squared, always the left knee directly above the left uh, ankle, arms up. Super. Inhale. Stretch up. Look up. Exhale. Maybe try to do just a slight back bend if that's possible. Chest up. Inhale. Come back up again. Exhale. Hands forward. Forehead to the knee. Inhale here while keeping the contact. Exhale. Now on your inhale, extend the left leg completely. Bring the hips back. So sort of a half splits here. Again, your right hip should be directly on, well, aligned at least, not outward, but inward above your right knee. Left leg extended or not, depending on your level of flexibility, but chest up. So extending from the spine. Super. Bring the left foot back on the mat, hands on each side of the left foot, tuck the right toes in, and then as you exhale, left foot back, downward facing dog. Now, Ashtanga Namaskar, inhale, both knees on the mat into tabletop, tops of the feet on the mat. Exhale, chest on the mat between the hands, inhale. Roll forward and up into a cobra. Pelvis stays on the mat. Exhale, tuck the toes. Back into downward facing dog. And you can always transition on the knees to go back to downward facing dog, especially if you have, like I said, lower back problems. Focus on contracting the lower abdomen so that you're protecting your body and you're also developing the muscles there around that, the belt area. Um, which are super important. Now inhale, lift the right leg up. And as you exhale, right foot forward between the hands. Left knee on the mat, top of the left foot on the mat. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, let the hips sink down low into that low lunge. 
Once again, you can take the time even with your hands to sort of check your hips. Are my hips squared? Readjust yourself, even if that means coming up a little higher. Right ankle directly below the right knee. Bring the arms up again. Inhale, stretch up, look up. Exhale, back bend. Slight back bend, pushing the pelvis forward, chest up. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, hands on each side of the foot, forehead to the knee. Inhale here. Exhale. On your next inhale, tuck the left toes and bring the left foot forward. Forward bend. We're going to be working on Parahastasana. You can do it while bringing your hands behind your calves if you're not very flexible. You want to keep the, bend, the knees bent to start with. Ankles, knees at the same width as your hips. If this is quite easy, you've done this before, you know you're able to, you can also lift your feet and bring the palms of your, of your hands on the palms of your feet. <laughs> okay, so knees bent, inhale, extend the spine. And as you exhale, start extending the legs. You can open the elbows. I want you to take five breaths here. Contract the thighs, lift the rotulas. We don't want to be in hyperextension here. We want to just have the legs straight and really engaging all the muscles in the legs. Bringing the weight a little bit forward so that the hips are directly above the ankles. Good. Remove the grip if you had your hands below your feet. With the knees bent, extend the spine and the arms forward. Inhale, come all the way up, straight back. Look up, exhale, back bend, pelvis, chest up, arms with the ears. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, second part. Come down with a straight back. If this is too challenging for you, please bend the knees. Adapting the postures. Hands on each side of the feet. Forehead to the shins. Inhale, flat back, either keeping the tips of the fingers on the mat or on the shins. Exhale, hands between the feet. This time, left foot way back. Left knee on the mat, top of the left foot on the mat. Inhale, arms and upper body up. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, come up, look up. Exhale. Slight back bend. Hips forward, chest up. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hands on each side of the front foot. Forehead to the knee. Inhale here. Exhale. Now on the next inhale, extend the right leg. Either keeping the full front foot flat on the mat or bringing the toes up. Make sure your left hip is directly above your left knee and extend that right leg as much as you can. Trying to also extend the upper body forward and out. One last inhale. Now just bring the right foot back flat on the mat, hands on each side of the foot, tuck the left toes, and then on the exhale, bring your right foot back into downward facing dog. Ashtanga Namaskar, inhale, both knees on the mat, tops of the feet on the mat. Exhale, chest on the mat between the hands. Inhale, push forward and up into a cobra. Chest high, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up, all the way up. And as you exhale, bring the left foot forward between the hands, right knee on the mat, top of the right foot on the mat. Inhale, upper body and arms up. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, stretch up, look up. 
Exhale, slight back bend. Hips forward, chest up, arms with the ears. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, hands forward, forehead to the knee. Inhale here in place. Exhale. Inhale, hands on each side of the left foot. Tuck the right toes onto the mat and come forward into a forward bend. Okay, so another Parahastasana. So if you want to just use the same variation as before, you can do that. If you want to work your way up to a more advanced version, you can as well. I suggested an option of putting your feet over your palms or your hands. You can also, if you'd like, test a different option. You can bring your feet together, bend the knees, and then just bring your hands underneath your heels. Okay, thumbs included in the grip. Inhale, try to straighten your back. And as you exhale, just wanna pull on your heels and extend the legs slowly. Come to a forward bend. So you wanna have contact with the belly and the thighs first and then the rest, okay? So don't extend your legs too much if your upper back is really rounded. You wanna keep the upper back as straight as possible, head nice and relaxed, shoulders relaxed. The shoulders should not be engaged here. So even if you're pulling with your hands, keep your shoulders relaxed. One last inhale. You can just remove the grip, keep the knees bent, arms forward. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, exhale, bring the arms down to the sides of the body. For the, this next series, we're gonna need the block. And I'm just gonna be working through a few traditional Hatha, posture, Hatha postures and we're gonna be using the block to really focus on alignment before death. And of course you can choose if you actually need the block or not, okay? So it's up to you. Feet together, hands in Namaskar in front of the chest. Inhale, stretch up, exhale. Right foot to the right, about four feet. Turn the left toes in. Extend the arms out parallel to the mat, shoulders down. Pivot the right toes to the right. So you have, should have about three and a half or even four feet distance between your feet. You can have your right heel sort of aligned with the middle of your left foot. Make sure that your left foot is not opened. So it's at the minimum parallel and if possible, even turned a little bit inward. Now keep both of your hips parallel. In this first posture, which is Utita Trikonasana, the classic triangle, we don't wanna have the hips parallel. We actually want to open the hips like the pages of a book. I'd like to invite you to use a block. So there's three levels to your block. So the highest level, the middle level, and the lower level. And just place it straight in front of your foot. Okay, so come back up, arms parallel. Inhale, chest up, spine straight, exhale. Just start to sort of bend your body to the right as far as it'll go, feeling the stretch in the left side of the body. And then bring the right hand onto your block. Right hip forward, left hip back. Both thighs completely contracted, completely extended arches of the feet lifted. If this helps, you can also lift the toes so that you really feel the arch lifting. Left arm up, shoulders away from the ear, opening the chest. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to that right shoulder that you don't want to be rolling in that right shoulder. Right shoulder open and out. Super. So to come out of the posture, keep the legs extended, upper body straight, good. Let's switch sides, okay? So this time, right foot, right toes in, left toes out. If you are using your block on the other side, use it again. Make sure your alignment is all right. So opening the hips, so this time, right hip back, left hip forward. Belly button in, arms parallel to the floor. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, just bend over gently to the left. 
feel that nice stretch in the right side of the body. And once you can't stretch forward anymore, left hand on the block and right arm up. Mm -hmm. So once again, we're trying to pull this time the left hip forward, 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 as if I had like a little rope here and I was pulling through your left hip, right hip pushing back and opening. Both thighs contracted. So feeling the rotulas lifting without being in hyperextension. Lift both arches of the feet. You can look up towards your right hand. One day your chin should be aligned with your right shoulder. If it isn't, don't push it. So we want to have the nice long spine, cervical spine here as well. And to come out of the posture, keep both legs extended, spine straight, and come all the way up. From here, we're going to work the Parvrita Trikonasan, which is the revolved triangle. Now, I'm going to just, it doesn't matter how, in which direction you're positioned, but I'm going to place myself in this way so that you can see me. So I want you to have basically your feet three and a half distance between your, your feet. Your back heel should be touching the mat. So if that's difficult for you, you can open the angle of your back foot, but never beyond 90 degrees. Make sure that your heels are in one line, that they're not crossing each other. Both hips parallel. So you want to this time push the left hip so that both of your hips are facing forward. And this time place your block on the outside, okay, of your right foot. And you might want to start with the highest level just to see how things work out and then just go progressively as, as the intent of this class of Ashteya, okay? Pelvis contracted, right hand on the right hip. Inhale, lift the left arm up. Stretch up, look up. Now as you exhale, stretch forward. Spine forward. Left hand on the block, on the outside of your foot. Now you want to keep both hips parallel. And as you inhale, open the right arm up to the sky. If this is too challenging, just keep your right hand on your sacral area to really see, make sure you're maintaining alignment. If not, if it's all good, both thighs contracted, make sure those quadriceps are lifting, navel in, shoulders away from the ear. Super, last inhale, stretch up, stretch out. And as you exhale, come all the way up, right hand on the right hip, come up stretching forward and out. So we always want to come out of the posture in the exact same way that we came in. And we can just switch sides. I'm going to do the demo on the same side so that you can see my body from both angles. Again, let's place the block three and a half feet distance between both feet. Right toes turned in. Pushing that right hip forward so that both of your hips are squared as much as possible. Thighs contracted. Left hand on left hip. Inhale, stretch the right arm up. Exhale, stretch forward. Stretch, 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 stretch. Right hand on the outside of the left foot. Keeping both hips squared. And again, this time, left arm up. So we're twisting the upper body. You should feel that the weight is distributed equally between the front and the back foot. So as you inhale, you're stretching out the spine, extending the spine, and as you exhale, twist. One last inhale, stretch up and out. Exhale, left hand on the left hip. Keep both arms extended and come back up the exact same way as you came. From here, we're gonna go into another variation of the triangle, which is Parshva Konasana. One leg is gonna be bent. You should be taking up the three quarters of your mat for Parshva Konasana, okay? Make sure that your heels are in one line. Left foot to start out should be at least parallel never beyond 90 degrees. Make sure your block is handy. We're gonna bring the block behind the right foot, okay, in this case. Again, we wanna open the hips like the pages of the book. Chest up, arms parallel to the floor. 
Inhale, stretch up, spine straight. Exhale, bend that right knee. Excellent. Inhale, spine up, chest up. Exhale, right hand on the block. And then left hand up. Check your alignment. Is your knee on top of your heel? Am I lifting the arch of the foot of the right foot? Am I bending too low? If you're very flexible, you actually have to work and contract those inner thigh muscles so that you're not sagging below, okay? So you wanna maintain that lifting effect in those inner thigh muscles. Left arm up, pointing the fingers up, shoulders away from the ears, looking towards your left thumb, Inhale, stretch up one more time, stretch out, spine straight. And as you exhale, keep the right knee bended and come back into warrior two. And now inhale, extend the right leg. Pivot the right toes inward. Keep your block handy. You might need it, okay? So heels parallel, toes in to protect your knees. Contract the thighs, belly in, chest up. Arms parallel to the floor. Inhale, chest up, stretch up, pushing the pelvis forward. Exhale, swan dive. Looking straight ahead, extending the spine all the way down. Now, if you're very tight here, you want to bend the knees. You can even come and use your block to sort of put your hands on your block. Knees bent, keep the spine straight, extending the spines forward and then just working on extending your legs, okay? Even here, in this very sort of conservative Prasarita Padottanasana, which I'm in, there's so many things I can be thinking about here. So lifting my arches of the feet. Lift the toes if you're having trouble lifting the arches of the feet and finding the energy there. Contracting the thighs, lifting those quadriceps. Belly in. Tailbone down, okay? So you don't want to be pushing your hips out. So Tailbone towards the mat, extending forward the spine, extending that cervical spine, okay? Bring the arms now parallel to the floor. Inhale and come all the way up. Good. So we're gonna go into Parashvakunasana on the other side. So you can extend the stance, about three quarters of your mat. Again, check your alignment between your feet. Bring your block to the same height behind your foot, how you had it the previous time. Behind your left foot this time. Push that left hip forward, right foot, hip back. Arms parallel to the floor, thighs contracted. Inhale, chest up, spine up. Exhale, bend the left knee. You never wanna have the knee beyond the ankle, so if that's the case, you might wanna take a wider stance. Inhale. Stretch up again, and as you exhale, left hand on the outside of the left foot, right arm up. So perfect alignment between your left heel, left knee, and left thigh. Right leg completely extended. Lift the arches of the foot, pushing that right hip towards that right heel, and looking up. So you don't want to have all the weight in your hand either, so you're sort of just supporting yourself, but you're not like all the weight there. You should feel like there's also a lot of weight in your back foot in these postures. Inhale, stretch out, stretch up. Exhale, keep the left knee bended and come back into warrior two. And as you inhale, extend the left leg, okay? Bring the hands on the hips and you can just gently bring the right foot forward onto your mat. Okay, so it's gonna be variations of the tree pose that I'm gonna show you. First variation that you can do, which is the most accessible, is either, so anchor your left foot onto your mat, lift your right foot up, and try to bring it as high as possible onto your left upper thigh, okay? The higher the better, and the idea is that you wanna have the bottom of your sole of your foot pointing up, okay? So, it can, it's possible you may just be over your knee. Ne never put your foot on your knee. So ideally up high on your groin um, because you want to be pushing your hips forward, okay, as you push that right knee down and back. 
So aiming one day to have both of those knees sort of parallel, okay? Tilting the pelvis forward, and then bringing the hands in Namaskar in front of the chest. If this is not at all accessible to you, you can always just put the foot also on the inside of your thigh like so, okay? So this is an option. For those of you that are already here, with the foot up high on the thigh, hands namaskar, you can also try to start bending down, okay, keeping the back straight and bringing your hands down just beyond your foot, okay? And from here, you just want to bring your upper body down as far as possible. And maybe one day you can actually go and touch your forehead with your shin contact there. And breathe. To come out of the posture, we want to come out the exact opposite way. You can micro bend the left knee. Take your time. And then gently bring the right foot on the mat. So we're going to do the other side. Anchor your right foot onto the mat. Do the same variation as you did for the other side. So again, you might find that your body is really different from one side to the next. So be patient with yourself. Be very caring. So if you are bending down, you can just slowly make your way so this class is all about sort of inviting you to adapt postures to your limits. It's not because the teacher is telling you to do something that you absolutely need to, to do it. Okay, wherever you are, just come back up slowly. And then bring your left foot down. We're going to go into a yogi squat. So just spread the feet about the width of the mat, maybe turning the toes a little bit outward. If you can keep the feet parallel, do so. But if you need some help, open the feet. Spine straight, hands in namaskar in front of the chest. Inhale, stretch up. And as you exhale, keeping the heels on the mat, we just want to go down as low as we can. OK? So in the spirit of offering options, if you have your, your block, sorry, you can always sit on the block. Okay, so if, if, if yogi squat is very intense for you, why not just practice using a block so that you can sort of work through the mechanics of the posture and um, yeah, <laughs> rather than just being all over the place. And, and some people I know, they're like, I don't need props, but Really, there's nothing to be ashamed of uh, in using props. They're there to support us, and even the most advanced practitioners, they use blocks, they use props. That's how you evolve the right way, and that's how you avoid injury. So wherever you are in your squat, just take one last nice breath. And as you exhale, you can come down to a seated position here. Extend the legs. Good. Okay, we're going to go into a forward bend, the same that we did when we were standing up, but this time seating, okay, in a seated position. And I want to, again, introduce the strap because for those of you that have challenges in these postures, um, know that you can actually use the props to help you. So I just want you to come and bring the strap, not on your toes, just below the toes, okay? So the first thing is that you want to have both legs extended. If just sitting up straight 90 degrees like this is difficult, you need to sit on a block. And don't be afraid to do so. By using the blocks, by using the props, you're actually going to be able to progress much faster, um, even though it doesn't feel that way, OK? So legs extended. You want to try to sort of be contracting your thighs to remove the, what we call the elephant gap underneath your knees. Now inhale, chest up. And as you exhale, you just want to pull yourself forward, imagining that your belly is going to be the first element to start touching your thighs. Okay, so shoulders relax, and you're just sort of 
putting yourself forward like so. If you can actually come in and grab your outsides of your feet, by all means, do so. So you're extending, chest up, exhale, you can come down. So if your belly's touching your thighs, then you can try to come and bring your chest on your thighs. And lastly, your face. Wherever you are, inhale. And as you exhale, come all the way back up. In the exact way that you came. Super. Okay. So we're going to go into reverse tabletop just to continue maybe on the theme of stretching our shoulders like we did in the beginning of the class. So bring your, your bottoms of your feet to your mat and calculate the distance maybe of a forearm distance behind you. Now squeeze your elbows in together. If this, if the objective is we're going to be lifting the hips, so if you feel like you're not going to be able to do so, just bring your feet in closer in to you. Um, however, if it feels good, inhale. And on your next exhale, just bring the hips up. We want to try to extend the legs, okay? And also keep the toes on the ground, ideally. So push that chest up, look towards your chest, hips up. We're going to take five breaths here. Work with your breath. Two more breaths. One last inhale. Exhale. Come back down into seating, seated position. Super. Okay, we're going to go down onto our backs. We're going to practice a little exercise. So moving down onto our backs, I want you to tilt your pelvis forward, okay, and take your time. So imagine that you're unraveling the spine one vertebra at a time. If you need to extend your legs forward, do so. So contract your abs, go slow. Go slow, tucking the pelvis in. So you don't want to do that little, you see how I went back super fast? That's what we want to avoid. <laughs> so that doing that is especially challenging for me, but the challenging postures are actually the ones that we need to practice the most. Okay, happy baby. So ideally what we want to do with happy baby is just being just grabbing the outsides of your feet like so, with your knees on each side of your chest. If that is not accessible to you, you can just use the strap here and um, keeping your feet hip width, starting to sort of pull down your knees on each side of your chest. Now what we're trying to do here is keeping the shoulders on the ground, your chin, tucked into your chest, looking down the center line of your body, and also imagine that your tailbone is touching the ground, so all of your spine one day touching the ground. One last inhale, and exhale, release. Extend the legs all the way down. Padamukhtasana this time, when we're moving posture, keep your left leg extended, bend the right knee, interlace your ten fingers, grab your shin just below your right knee. Left toes of the left foot. Cut. And just release. Feet flat on the mat, bring your arms out into a T-shaped as we move into our last twist posture. Um, if you are having trouble with twisting postures, um, you can also use your block to sort of rest your knees, okay? So feel free to use your block. We're just going to do it traditionally here. So first, just scoot your hips over to the right, bring your knees into your chest, inhale, and as you exhale, bend the knees over to the left. So just a relaxed, reclined twist. If you want, you can bring your left hand on top of your le right thigh. You want to look to the right. Inhale. 
Inhale, bring both knees back up to center. Again, you can just give yourself a nice hug. This time, if you want to bring your forehead head into your knees, contact between the forehead and the knees. And then relax for Shavasana. Spread out the feet, about your, the width of your mat, arms to your sides, palms to the sky. Close your eyes. You can just let the breath be what it wants to be in this moment. And just bring your attention towards your heart. Let the, the gratitude and the gratefulness come in. Ultimately, nothing really belongs to ourselves, even not our lives. This is just an experience that we've been gifted to be alive and to have this experience in the human body. And so let's be grateful for that and embrace it, contemplate it, and be content with it as well. Try to cultivate that every day. So today, I'm just going to leave you in Savasana. If you'd like to stay here as long as you like, if you feel good, if you just want to enjoy this moment, please do so. If you have any questions about this class, please feel free to drop a line once you get up. It's been a pleasure guiding practice today. Thank you so much for joining. Sending you lots of love and energy your way. Namaste.